it does make me a little bit sad as a human, just watching all the breakthroughs on artificial intelligence side when applied to natural sciences, now more and more to physics, that the creatures that will solve the question of the origin of the nature of life or just the process, the nature of life, will be AI systems. It makes me a bit sad to... I don't think so. Uh, I don't think because so. You think at, humans will? At this point in time, remember who was behind AI. You know, I, I'm not buying in the singularity thing yet. Um, to, AI is not aware. AI is being built by humans. So um, AI is a tool, an extremely smart tool. As long as we build it, and as long as we use it as a tool, it remains a tool. And I think there is a lot of brouhaha, uh, and of course, uh, science fiction and, and movies, they don't help. Yeah, I, I got to push back a little bit. Yes, I agree with you for the most part in terms of brouhaha and sci-fi, but there is, like in the work of deep mind, we can look at chess or we can look at protein folding. So chess is a simple one to first look at. What... Uh, Alpha Zero, oh, which is their game playing engine, was able to discover in our Stockfish about chess humbles the best human players. Not just it's better than them, it comes up with ideas that the humans don't understand. And so the AI now is telling you, uh, even though it's programmed by humans, the AI is saying like, sacrificing a a pawn here is a good idea. Sacrificing a queen or a bishop here is a good idea. And then you start to kind of intuit as a human why, but you don't deeply understand. And you can say that AI is not conscious, it doesn't deeply understand the way humans do, but there's still a, a, a wisdom and a depth of knowledge in that chess playing program that humans don't have. And the same with the al alpha fold, with protein folding, there's a, and now they're applying it to physics to s simulating nuclear reactions and so on it feels like there might be a way to understand the nature of life that we can kind of intuit poetically as humans, but the the true understanding will come from a system that's much more com computationally sophisticated. Again, you know, I would push back on, on my turn because I still think that human gave themselves the ability to do that by building that tool. So the idea that the tool, you know, we're, we're, we are getting into the, the Kardashev scale and, 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 and the dark forest and all of these things. We can see the world this way. Uh, at this point in time, for me, I still see a great tool. Now, uh, whether the sci-fi scenario is going to, you know, uh, happen, etc., I still think that we are far away from from this. But if that tool is capable of giving me a new perspective, uh, it's just that uh, we are starting to jump into a deeper uh, cognition of of what the universe is, whether it's through our brain or through a different way of gathering information, remember, this is what we do. Yeah, humans are able to actually build tools and then like integrate them into their way of thinking. Maybe another generation has to be born that is raised with those tools, but we seem to like take for granted all the cool technologies you integrate into your way of thinking. A lot of people that are growing up now, their mind is integrated with the internet. You basically reconfigure the way you memorize things. You no longer have to memorize a lot of facts because you can look them up really quickly. Yeah, and, and so like, uh, so you uh, reallocate a lot of resources for uh, thinking versus memory of just strict facts. So that kind of stuff, and we integrate all of that. Yeah, and and uh, you know, there I would completely agree with you. In fact, I wrote about this mm -hmm. again. Uh, um, in, in this new book that's coming out. When is the book coming out? In January. It's, it will be in French, actually, uh, to start yes. with. You wrote it in French? Actually, I wrote it first in English. Yes. Uh, and I translated it into French. So the, the English version is already uh, pretty much ready to go uh, if we find a publisher in, uh, in the U.S. But anyways, um, the point uh, being here that I looked at this as uh, our relationship with technology as a complete change. To me, this is the singularity more than anything else, which is the coevolution 
of human with technology, not anymore with their environment. Why we are messing up the environment right now? Why we don't respond to pandemic the way we should? Because we are disconnected to the environment we are taking our information from and we were adapting from. Right now, exactly as you said, we take the information from the web, from the phones, etc. We have no filter over that information. Before you were out in the environment, the information you get is the one the planet is sending you. Now this information is coming from different way. You have no way of knowing if information is correct or not. Yeah, I got to push back on that. No, love, you, okay, look, okay, okay. you look at this as an ecosystem and yes. it explains a lot of our behavior. See, I like though you said teenagers. So we the technology, I think, when we move past the teenager stage, enriches our ability to sense the earth to understand what's going on with the environment. It's just that we're very, so it's not that technology disconnects us from the environment. It gives us more tools with which to understand what's going on with the environment. That's true for the people who are building the tools and know how to use it. Sure. Take those tools now, put them in the general public with no filter, which is happening with social media, which is happening with a lot of things. And you see the disaster this is creating. And it's not the disaster. It There's is. challenge. It's, you, know, you sound like a parent talking about a teenager. Yes. The teenage, <laughs> it's, it's the growing pains of a civilization that is com becoming deeply connected with our, we can communicate all across the world, even through the pandemic. That's the good thing about technology. This yes. is also something I wrote. It's not the tools we create that are bad. It's the way we use them. Yes. And but we're true. learning. Well, this is the cool thing and about hopefully human. we'll do all the learning before it's too late because our response to what's going on in the environment, our response to pandemics is deeply connected to this disconnect we have with nature. Anyways, we all agree that we are in growing pains and hopefully we can move forward because there is a fantastic universe, something absolutely magical around us. And I'm talking as a scientist, I mean, there is magic. Not in sense of you know trickery, but in sense of wonder uh, around us, and there are so many signs where we are getting so close to revolutions in cosmology, in astrobiology, in astronomy, which I think to me this is where the hope lies, and also an awakening of understanding that we need to. Uh, be in equilibrium with the planet if we want to move forward. Because even though we have these big dreams of going on Mars and the moon, and listen, I am a planetary geologist, so I am all for exploration. Right now, the moon or Mars is not going to save your butt because for the logistics will still depend very much on the Earth and for a long time. I think this time we are living in will be remembered as a pivot in our history for, for a number of reasons. Uh, a, a time where there is a growing consciousness, where we are creating tools that are going a little bit ahead of us, that we have a, some, some difficult time to catch up uh, on with, where we have to deal with a population that's way uh, uh, too big for the planet we have. We need to really learn a sense of balance and, 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 and and maturity as a civilization. So how is this going to unfold? Right now, I have no clue. I draw a lot of optimism from the similar things that happened many decades ago when nuclear weapons were developed. Boy, it was that at the time even more terrifying. You just now created weapons that could destroy the entirety of life on Earth, or not entirety, but a lot of it and we somehow found a balance. And the threat constantly is out there. And that threat has been made more visceral in recent times uh, because of the war in Ukraine. But we find a balance somehow. So I, there, I have a thread of optimism for human civilization that we, that we figure it out. We're clever teenagers, I think. We are clever teenagers. There is definitely a thread of optimism, but I think it's thin. It's thin because something that has changed as well is the mentality of, of humans. Um, although the threat was terrifying when uh, nuclear weapons were, were created, um, there was a sense of 
limits you were willing to push in the threats, um, there were there was a sense of decency, of moral values. It was not perfect, but it was at least a time where people could come together from very different perspective and agree that something was more important than destroying everything. But that's so hilarious you say that. Yes, you're talking about a small slither of humans, which is the scientists in the Manhattan Project, perhaps. No, absolutely That was not. also the time when over 100 million people were tortured or murdered. No, no, I agree China with that. And, and Europe. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm not talking about scientists here. Actually, I'm talking about politicians. We've gone beyond that point now. This is what I'm worried about. I mean, torture, et cetera. Unfortunately, well, we are apes, exactly what you said. So I think that, you know, there is a lot to be, uh, yeah. not, 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 not to blame grandpa for that, yeah, but, but uh, because we can always get better. Well, grandpa um, was a wild man. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to improve a lot on that side before we can claim that we are a, a mature civilization. 